welcome everyone to the discussion on CBSE case study based questions which is specially created for uh, students and teachers who are uh, there in uh, subject mathematics for grade 9 or grade 10. So today I am going to discuss with you certain interesting facts about the case study based questions. Also we will be having a look at those questions which are situational based and how what different types of questions can be asked. So you all are aware that CBSC has uh, changed the pattern of class 10 mathematics examination 2020-21 and similarly in the schools for grade 9 you know, teachers are designing blueprint for assessment in which they will be asking case study based questions. So this is the basic thing which is uh, available on the CBSE website also that this year in class 10 there will be two parts in the question paper part A and part B. Part a consists of two sections, section 1 and 2. In section 1, there will be 16 questions of one mark each and it will be having internal choice in five questions. And in section 2, there will be four questions which will be case study based questions. And in each case study based question, there will be five subparts and an examinee has to attempt four out of the five subparts. So there will be a choice of one question each in each case study. Now in part B, there will be very short answer type questions of two marks each. That will be question number 21 to 26. That is six questions. So 12 marks are for uh, very short answer type questions. Then uh, there will be short answer type questions which are of 3 marks that is question number 27 to 33. So these are 7 questions. And then after that there will be long answer type questions of 5 marks each and there will be three such questions. Please note that internal choice will be provided in two questions of two marks each and two questions of three marks each and one question of five marks. So this is the basically change in pattern of grade 10 mathematics exam. Hopefully in your school in grade 9 also you are following the same pattern. Moving on to today's session. So first of all we have to understand what is a case study based question. So we will be brainstorming on this first. What is a case study based question? So there are various uh, you know situations in which uh, questions mathematical questions can be asked. So there is a possibility that you are provided with some information related to some topic and on the basis of that information some questions are asked. So this is one possibility. Second thing is now you have to be very careful that information which is provided to you which is related to a topic involves the use of different chapters which you are studying in grade 9 or in grade 10. Second thing is some situation based case study is given.
and on the basis of that situation certain questions are asked so what is that situation based case study that means somebody has done some experiment and on the basis of those experiments some data is provided or some situation is described in the form of a paragraph and you have to infer information and might be some notes are given and then you have to use those notes to you know use mathematical concept for solving the questions which are provided another possibility is that you are given some picture or a graph or some table of data and on the basis of that some questions are asked so what is a case study based question so case study based question involves mixture of things so these are basically situation based questions which are which can be seen in daily life and that situation is translated in the form of a picture or a graph or a table of data or any other information and then using that information you are going to solve the questions which are provided to you now you must be thinking that why such questions will be there what is the objective of asking a case study based questions you may directly ask any question so please note that the purpose of learning of mathematics is basically mathematization of mind it is not just knowing a formula and doing a little bit of calculations and getting a right answer it is much deeper so basically understanding how mathematics is correlated in life so we need to visualize the correlation of learning mathematics in solving certain questions which are given in our daily life so here you have to understand the purpose so purpose is mathematization of the mind and the purpose is acquiring some certain skills so i'm writing here so first purpose is mathematization of mind so what do we mean by that we mean that we are able to analyze the given situation read the data infer information and then create something new so second thing is that when a situation is given then enhance the skills basic skills which are to be used in life like enhance skills what all types of skills like critical thinking or problem solving or you may say that creative thinking meaning looking at solution from different perspective and then estimation so these are variety of uh, skills which are to be enhanced while teaching learning of mathematics and these by asking these questions we are able to see whether the child is able to apply the knowledge and understanding of the concepts which are learned in a math classroom now all of you are aware that in a math classroom if you study mathematics so broader you see that in a broader way you learn vocabulary and then you learn concepts and processes and after that you do problem solving so there are three things which we do in a math class we learn vocabulary we understand concept and processes and after we do problem solving so case study based questions are one step ahead of this 
we will be using the vocabulary we will be using the concepts and processes we will be using the ways of solving a problem but we will be trying to form a correlation of mathematics in daily life correlation of maths in daily life so basically we have to acquire the skill of applying mathematics creatively with critical thinking and use these skills to solve certain questions and understand the situations so let us discuss this uh, first case study now my first question to all of you when you see this picture what do you observe okay pattern you observe you see you can relate it with numbers and lots and lots of questions can be framed on the basis of this situation now see what is this situation it says miss malini goes to a grocery shop for purchasing some glass jars for gifting in a party and she observed that jars are arranged one above the other in a specific pattern as you can see the pattern is clearly visible on the top you can see there are three jars that we can assume that it is the top layer the first row now if you see the second row in the second row we can see that uh, here there are six jars so three jars you see in the first row and then in the second row we see six jars in the third row we see nine jars and we can now observe the pattern right and we can see that how the shopkeeper has placed these jars one above the other now on the basis of this situation certain questions have been framed let us see and try to solve them the first question is how many total jars are there how many total jars are there now you tell me in this question we observe the pattern what is that pattern that uh, the number of jars they are in uh, some special sequence you can see that the sequence which is given is 3 6 9 so on and we observe that this sequence is making an arithmetic progression so 3 6 9 so on now the question is how many total jars are there so first we need to see how many rows are there 1 2 3 4 5 six, 7 8 eight rows are there so can we find what will be the last term that is the eighth term in this sequence it is making a arithmetic sequence so what is the formula for tn tn is a plus n minus 1 into d a plus n minus 1 into d simplify this and tell me how many total jars will be there can you find the last term so this is equal to 
a is 3 plus there are 8 rows 8 minus 1 is 7 into d d is 3 so this gives us 24 so we get that last term is 24 fine but we need to find how many total jars are there so that means we have to find some of the 8 terms s8 so this is equal to n by 2 into a plus last term so that means 8 upon 2 into a is 3 plus last term we have found that is 24 so this gives us 4 into 24 plus 3 that gives us 27 and the answer comes out to be 108 so what is the answer b part is the correct answer okay let us move on to the next question the next question is if there are 100 such rows interesting then how many jars will be in the 56th row earlier we have seen that there are 8 rows which are visible to us now the question is saying if there are 100 such rows that means we have the sequence 3, 6, 9, so on. That means we have 100 terms. And we need to find out what is the 56th term. So we need to find out T56. So what is the 56th term? We will be using the formula A plus N minus 1 into D. So that means, let me write down the formula, A plus N minus 1. N is 56, so 55 into D. So that gives us 3 plus Then simplify this n minus 1 is 55 into d d is 3 so what is the answer so the answer will be 3 plus 165 so that gives us 168 right so we got the answer of the second question that is B part so 56 term will be having 168 jars 56th row will be having 168 jars let us move on further next question is if on the top the shopkeeper puts two more rows having jars 2 and 1 respectively will it be an arithmetic sequence just try to understand here in the second question also the assessment was that whether you are able to visualize the situation because things which is visible here is having eight number of rows and now you have to see about the imagine about the hundred such rows and then counting number of jars in the 56th row here also you have to imagine that there is there are two more rows which are added and then the sequence will change now what will be the sequence sequence will be 1 2 3 6 
9 and so on. And then you have to see whether it is making an arithmetic sequence or not. So here if you see 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, so on, the, the common difference is not same between the two consecutive terms. So we say no. So we see, we see that there are two choices having the answer no, but we will have to see which is the right one. So B part says no because the common difference between each row is not same. Perfectly fine. And D part says no because the common difference between each row is the same. So we see that here B is the right answer. Here also you can very well see that critical thinking is playing a great role. Right? To choose which is the right answer on the basis of knowledge and understanding. And then application part as well. So many things are involved in this question. Okay, coming on to the next. Miss Malini asked the shopkeeper to pack it in the same fashion as it was displayed. Okay, it is displayed in some pattern. So she said, okay, try to make the bag so that the pattern in which the jars are arranged, that should be the same. So shopkeeper used a box. Now you can see that a box has been created and the dimensions are also mentioned and it is given that the face, front face of the box is an equilateral triangle. So you can very well imagine that the child has to imagine over here that which three dimensional shape is now forming here. The box is in the shape of a triangular prism and how to calculate the capacity of that prism right so you know that uh, here it will be area of the equilateral triangle into the height so we can we have to again apply how to find the area of equilateral triangle okay using the formula root 3 by 4 a square and then finding the height, height is given to be 10. So root 3 by 4 a square into 10. So simplify this and when you simplify this, you get the answer. And in this question, the answer comes out to be uh, 1440 root 3 cubic units. So root 3 is also changed here. The value is given to be as 1.73. So here in this question also you will see that visualization is playing a great role and then find calculation is also playing a great role. Right. Okay. Coming on to the next question. Malini asked the shopkeeper to wrap it with a gift paper. Find the total surface area of the paper used. Now you see here again the concept of total surface area is involved and you know here the total surface area of the whole shape so we will be considering the front and the back that is equilateral triangle and then the three remaining faces are rectangular with the given dimensions and calculating it's not just application of arithmetic sequence chapter it's like involving the concept of surface area concept of volume shapes three dimensional and then obviously the arithmetic sequence concept was also tested so basically in this one complete question you see how many things have been tested okay now let us move on to what other things can be asked now you see if i change the packing box shape from uh, triangular prism to a uh, cuboid and give some dimensions you can ask some question on this similarly if i change this outer cover into a right circular cylinder cylindrical box then also some questions can be asked right so basically the idea is to imagine to visualize 
and then to apply the knowledge and acquire skills of looking at mathematics from different perspective right okay let us move on to another situation this is a very interesting one so this is a uh, another case study in which money saving pattern is depicted so it's it is saying that money saving pattern of shriya gauri and manak who started saving money from first week of month of may 2019 so it is displayed so you can see that shriya started saving uh, with rupee 10 gauri also started with rupee 10 and manak also started with rupee 10 and in week 2 the pattern changed so shriya saved 2 rupees more in week 2 so she saved 12 rupees gauri saved 13 rupees and manak saved 14 rupees and see gradually that uh, in the end it is mentioned that shriya continued saving the money till 15 weeks and gauri continued saving the money till 12 weeks and manak saved till 10 weeks so interestingly you can now imagine lots and lots of questions can be asked in this situation let us see the first one how much money was saved by shriya in the 15th week i am coming back here now you you have to just focus on the pattern of shriya's saving so just see the numbers 10 12 14 16 and she has saved up to 15 weeks so let us write it down 10 12 14 16 and the pattern is she has saved up to 15 weeks so it is asked how much money was saved by shriya in the 15th week so first of all tell me what will be the saving of 15th week how you are going to calculate that means you need to find t15 15th term so what is t15 that is a plus 14d again you see that this is making a arithmetic sequence so a plus 14d so what is a plus 14d simply you can calculate the objective is not that you are getting a difficult question the objective is you may you might get a very simple question but you should be able to understand the situation and apply your knowledge and skill for solving the whatever question has been asked so a plus 14d very simple 10 plus 14 into 2 you can simplify this and you get the answer as 28 plus 10 that is 38 so 38 so d part is the right answer is it clear let us move on to the next one how much total money was saved by shriya so see there is a difference between uh, previous question and this question here it is asking how much money was saved by shriya in the 15th week comprehension of uh, statements is really really important how much mon total money was uh, saved by shriya that means you have to add on all the money which shriya has saved saved so that means uh, what what is to be solved we have to find the sum of sequence let me write down the sequence 10 12 14 14 on and we have found the last term let me see which was what was the last term that is the answer of the previous question that is 38 we have to solve and we know that all these are 15 terms so that means we have to find s15 sum of 15 terms use the simple formula s15 is equal to n by 2 so we can see 15 by 2 into a plus the last term we have already found the last term so we can use this formula so a is 10 plus the last term is 38 so this is equal to you can get the answer now 
into 38 plus 10 that is 48 let us simplify this so this gives us 360 so rupees 360 is the answer a part right okay let us move on to the next question how much money was saved by manak in the ninth week i am going back here see the pattern 10 14 18 22 that means there is a common difference of 4 and manak did the saving up to 10 weeks but we need to find here what is the ninth term because it's uh, it's been asked over here that how much money was saved by manak in the ninth week in the ninth week how much money he has saved so let us write down the sequence first so the sequence is 10 all of them started with rupee 10 so he saved 10 14 18 so on and we have to see first how much money he has saved in ninth week so first tell me what is the ninth term t9 t9 will be equal to a plus 8d that is 10 plus 8 into 4 d is 4 common difference is 4 so that means 32 plus 10 that is 42 so let us see this is 42 so that means in the ninth week he has saved rupees 42 now if the question would have been how much total money he has saved till ninth week so you have to understand the language so that means in that case you would be further finding the sum of the terms 10 14 18 up to 42 because in the ninth week he has saved 42 more rupees so 10 14 18 up to 42 so we will be finding the sum of all the terms right so you have to understand the language how much money was saved by Manak in the ninth week or till the ninth week? Let us move on to the next question. Who out of Shriya and Manak saved more money and by how much? So here you need to first calculate because Shriya saved the money up to 15 weeks. We have already calculated. And we have found that uh, Shriya has saved uh, rupees 360. So we can directly write down here Shriya saved uh, rupees 360 in 15 weeks. Right. And now we have to see how much money Manak has saved in 10 weeks. So we have found the ninth term ninth term for manak saving was rupees 42 right i hope you remember that so in the 10th week how much money manak will save 42 plus 4 because uh, there is a common difference of uh, 4 so 42 plus 4 meaning 46 so can you tell me how much total money manak has saved so what are the manak's savings so Manak's savings would be equal to n by 2, n meaning 10. So 10 by 2 into a plus l. a is 10, that is the first term, plus last term, 42 plus 4, that is 46. That's a tricky thing here, you have to be very careful. So that means uh, 5 into uh, this uh, 46 plus 10 that means 56 you can simplify and we get to see that it gives us 5 6 are 30 and then 5 5 are 25 plus 
3. <clears throat> so you can compare the two answers of uh, Shriya's saving and uh, Manak's saving and then get the answer. So what is the answer? Just tell me fast. Do the calculations and let me know what is the answer. Who has saved more money? So this is uh, 280. Yes, Shriya has saved more money. And Shriya has saved how much more money? 80 rupees more than Manak. Good. Let us move on to the next question. Next question is, if Shriya's saving is maximum, then after how many weeks, Gauri's savings will exceed Shriya's saving? Quite interesting. How much money Shriya has saved? We have already calculated. Shriya's savings is rupees 360 in 15 weeks. We can write it here again. Shriya's savings is equal to rupees 360 in 15 weeks. And we know that Gauri has saved the money for how many weeks? Uh, let us go back to the question. It says Gauri started with rupees 10 having a common difference of 3 continued till 12 weeks. Okay. So Gauri has the saved the money for 12 weeks. So Gauri's savings can you calculate? What will be the 12th term T12 T12 is A plus 11 D so that means uh, we she started with 10 plus 11 into D is 3 so that gives us uh, 33 plus 10 that is 43 so this is Gauri's last saving and now you are going to find the sum of all 12 terms of Gauri's saving and it comes out to be 12 upon 2 into A plus last term that is 10 plus 43 that is 53 into 6. So we can write here 6 into 53. So that gives us 318. So we can see that uh, Gauri's saving is less than Shriya's saving. Now the question. Just understand the question. It is a little tricky. If Shriya's saving is maximum, then after how many weeks Gauri's savings will exceed Shriya's saving? Now you tell me in the 13th week, how much money will be saved? by Gauri. In the 12th week she has saved 43 rupees and in the 13th week, 13th week she will save 43 plus 3 that means 46 more rupees. So what is 318 plus this money? Yes, 10 plus 43, is, we have found it as uh, 318. What will be the money in the 13th week? Money saved by Gauri. So, 318 plus 46. Add and tell me what is the answer. It comes out to be 364. 
so that means she has to save for one more week and her savings will be more than shriya's saving isn't it interesting so you have seen that i have shared with you two case studies and in both the case studies you have seen that we have used the concept of arithmetic progression but how the other things which are in the knowledge bank of a child are there which has to be applied for solving the questions right so i hope uh, this discussion is fruitful and you have understood uh, like what kinds of questions can be asked now in my next session i would be sharing with you some more types of uh, case study based questions which you can use and uh, practice and learn the skill of solving such questions thank you have a nice day